Hello everyone, Bridget Air here with All About the Grace and I'm glad to be back. I took a vacation and it was really awesome, um, but now I'm all fresh and I'm back. So I wanted to do this uh, segment on being a successful Catholic mom. I actually have 11 tips for things that I've gleaned with many of the books that I've read about Catholic parenting. Just through my experience, I've been a parent for a little over 20 years. So I want to share some of the wisdom that I have gained through my experience for younger moms or current, you know, moms about my age and to share some of the wisdom that I've learned in uh, several of the books that I've read. I've learned a lot of uh, humility and how to be successful through a lot of failure. Here we go. The top 11 tips for being a successful Catholic mom. First, be yourself. You are uniquely qualified to take care of your kids. You might look at other moms and say, oh, well, they do it this way or they do it that way. Doing it your own way with your kids is, is the best way. So be yourself is the first tip. Number two, I mentioned um, I've learned a lot from failure. Even if you do something with your kids, whether it's, I don't know, I mean, there's a million things you could fail at, but don't get stuck in that failure or don't get stuck in discouragement. Moms work really, really hard to take care of their kids. I mean, it's completely exhausting, but and you're trying really hard to make everything work out for all your kids, no matter how many you have. And you might be balancing work with that too. And you know, your marriage and spending time with your husband. So it's really easy to get, you know, you're going to fail at something, but just don't get stuck there. Try to pivot to, uh, if something doesn't work out, then just try something else. I, I could go into a bunch of failure stories, but I won't right now. <laughs> that would take like hours. Okay, number three, have a schedule as much as possible. Have a specific routine that you do. Have like family rituals that, you know, you get up at a certain time, you do certain things. And in that, I mean, that's why school classrooms run so smoothly because they have like a very regimented schedule so you know you don't want to be a drill sergeant at the house I can tend I can tend to be more like that but it's important to have structure and and stick to that as much as possible because once it's really hard to get it established but once you have it established it makes life so much easier um, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna refer to one book that was really helpful in that. This is um, an older book, um, A Mother's Rule for Life, and this woman homeschools, which I do not, but there were so, so many good tips in here for um, kind of putting together a schedule because she had to because she was homeschooling, but. Uh, that book really was helpful to for me to come up with some schedules okay number four be realistic with your schedule i have a tendency to over schedule things which is not good because then you don't have if anything goes sideways you're really backlogged so when i worked in washington dc and when i worked professionally I've, I've been to, I don't know, maybe three or four, maybe five different time management, professional development uh, classes, I guess, throughout my career, because I've always worked in very, very demanding um, positions that you really had to be able to execute and um, have very good time management skills. So I've been to a lot of classes on that. And one thing that I learned in all those classes, which I thought was really great, is to build in open space, <laughs> like build in, you know, don't 
don't schedule everything back to back. You got to have some slush time in between there. So that really goes for parenting and for motherhood and for when you're doing your schedule. And there's something else that's really good in this book. She talks about how when you have like a sick kid, okay, so you have this, you know, great rock and schedule, but when you have like, let's say somebody, one of your kids gets sick, that's a perfect example, or something comes up in your schedule that is not in your schedule, that's not normally in your schedule that really causes a setback. The, the main thing that I think of is someone gets sick and you're doing all this extra stuff to take, take care of that sick person and it could even just be like a broken arm or anything like that. And it's really easy to get off the schedule. And so what this woman, Holly, talks about in this book is she calls something like maintenance schedule so that you know that all this stuff isn't going to get done, but you kind of go into maintenance mode where... You know that the schedule's not going to work out too well. It's not going to be like it is. And just to just to go easy on yourself, realizing that, okay, you've got a sick kid, um, or I've got this other thing going on that has kind of messed up the flow. So that's really helpful. And then number five, which kind of goes along with that, is to forgive yourself like when, and, and to lower your expectations. That's the, kind of like the maintenance mode where, for instance, this past, past week, um, my one daughter was leaving for school, for college. And pretty much for like two weeks, we got back from vacation, then like we had like a week and a half to get everything she needed for school and I mean tons of paperwork for that and all and she had to take a COVID test and all this other stuff and basically all last week we were just doing that you know and so I had all this other stuff I had to do but I just thought you know what it's okay I'm getting her off to school and everything else is going to be um not the way it normally is, and then that's okay. Just don't freak out about it. So you just have to sometimes lower your expectations or be rather more realistic with, this is all I have time for this week. I'm concentrating on this particular child or this particular situation, and that's all I'm going to have time for, and I have to rest and sleep and eat and work out and all that, so I don't have a lot of time to do other stuff. So um, that's just another tip. Number six, now this surely should be number one, but pray early and often. It's really, really important. I mean, you can't do anything for God if unless you're praying. And you can try, but, um, and I, I fail at this all the time. I start, you know, doing it on my own, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to pray today, or I haven't prayed for a while, you know. But having, having those regimented prayer times I think first thing in the morning is really helpful and another another place where I pray a lot is in the laundry room when I'm folding laundry because it's really kind of a contemplative place it's quiet you kind of got some white noise with the dryer going or the washer going and it's just a great place to um, hang out with God and 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 get some time um, for yourself to kind of reflect on how your day's going. And really, it's it's really important to not just have your prayer time in the morning, personal prayer time, but you know, couple prayer time sometime during the day. My husband and I usually pray in the morning and at, at bedtime, you know, before we go to sleep. And you know, do that with your kids too. And then check in with God, you know, like, you know, normally my prayers help. <laughs> this is not going well, you know. Um, so pray early and often. Number seven, have Christian community. There are so many opportunities at the parish um, to have Christian community. And sometimes you might find another parish nearby that has like a mom's group. I've been in a bunch of different mom's groups um, over, you know, the course of my momhood. Um, and, you know, there's a different age mom group, you know, like 
kind of like the younger moms go like have like the mom's day out group when you know you just need to get a break and they have some kind of a co-op going so that might be a good thing um, if you haven't done a Christ Renews Parish at your parish that is a great way to meet other moms and to have Christian community or get involved in some kind of ministry because that's where you will have Christian community. Um, this book that I, I did a little, I've interviewed these ladies, the authors of this book, but The Catholic Women's Guide to Making and Keeping Good Friends, um, there's some great tips in here uh, about, about that. But that's really, your Catholic friends are really going to be a great support for you as you're a mom. And, and not just, you know, friends can be great, but Catholic friends that really are striving to live their faith are really, they can meet you, they can understand you a lot better, and they can bring in that faith dimension, maybe a book that they're reading that's helped them, they can share that with you. So having Christian community is really, really important. Number eight, learn to laugh at yourself. You know, sometimes it's so easy to get really focused on. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do that. And then you're just like yelling at your kids all the time. And you're like a drill sergeant. And I know like my kids are older now, but I mean, when my kids were younger, it was just like herding cats. It was just a total nightmare. Um, I mean, not really. I mean, my kids are great, but you know, sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, you know, three kids, two dogs. It's just crazy. And, um, and you know, I've just had to tell myself to just lighten up, you know, it's like, okay, we just, I just cleaned the kitchen and someone just spilled, you know, milk and there's jelly all over the counter and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I freak out, but you know, don't worry about it. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Just wipe it up, have your kids wipe it up. So try to lighten up and have humor, laugh at yourself. I have to tell myself that even though I like to laugh at stuff. Um, I got to laugh at myself. Okay, number nine. If something isn't working, try something new. I know that sounds so obvious, but I have been in times where I would just keep doing the same thing over. Like, what's the what's the um, the definition of it? The definition of insanity is doing something over and over and expecting a different outcome. Well, you know, we get in our routines and, you know, we keep trying to do something a certain way because maybe it's our way or the way our husband wants to do it, or the way our kids wants to do something or the way a teacher wants to do something. You keep doing it that way over and over and it's not working. And you keep trying to do it that way, but it's not working. So just try something else and maybe you'll get lucky and something else will work. Um, okay, number 10. Take care of yourself. This is a great book. I wish I would have found it a long time ago, but it's okay to start with you. I've interviewed this um, author, and um, for, for people that I've interviewed, and I have their book here, and if I've done an interview with them, Catholic Radio, I will go ahead and put the link in the description of this video so that you can access that. But, but this is a great book talking about and it's from all these books are catholic books how to be a good steward of yourself i guess and take care of yourself so that you can really really be a much better mom and a much better disciple for christ so it's a wonderful book so i would highly recommend that you just have to take care of yourself and so this says it's, it's okay to start with you and then a number 11 number 11 I met this lady. She has 12 kids. Her oldest child is autistic. And I interviewed her for Channel 8 a long time ago. Um, her first child was autistic, and then she had 11 other kids. So and the first child was very difficult. And she actually wrote a book about him. And she gave me this advice about parenting. And I don't even, I think maybe my kids were like two and like one or two and I guess they'd be two in like eight months or something like that. But she said, do whatever works, which has, I have, I have that, that saying has come to my mind so many times when things weren't working well for whatever reason with my kids, whether it was school or something else, you know, friendships or whatever with my kids. Um, 
or any kind of problem, do whatever works. And that, <laughs> that covers so much. So don't worry about what other people think or what they're doing or whatever, what, what's working for them. Do what works for you. Do what works for your family. So she had to really adopt that you know, when she, she has had an autistic child or has an autistic child, and if you have a kid with special needs, you are going to be doing all sorts of stuff that is not what other people are doing, but it works, you know. So um, those are my 11 tips. I hope, I hope you've gleaned something that's helpful. You can take a look here at the books that I have here that are really great as it relates to parenting. I'm just going to go ahead and put these up. They're not all connected to parenting, but they've all given me um, great insight in parenting. So hope that was helpful. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Oh, please, forget, don't forget to subs click subscribe below. It's the red button if you're not a subscriber. Um, that'd be great if you could subscribe. And then I also have a blog um, at www.allaboutthegrace.com. You can um, find um, blog posts over there, videos, podcasts, and written content. So God bless. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.